Hi everyone, this is Mike Heydrich. Um, I got my radiant floor heat filled and powered up today, so I'm going to give you an overview of the components I used to build the system. Um, I'm using an electric uh, EcoSmart 27 kilowatt instant hot water heater as my boiler. Um, it uses three 40 amp circuits. Uh, those are 8 gauge wires. And I have those terminated at outdoor uh, disconnects used for air conditioners. So it makes it a nice way to give yourself a, a switch uh, for the boiler. Um, so you can actually uh, turn off each of the circuits. Uh, it's not to provide overload circuit uh, protection, uh, just for a disconnect. So the uh, boiler, the hot water heater uses uh, um, three quarter inch fittings in and out. I'm using uh, three quarter inch PEX and these are the watts quick fit settings that so makes it real nice install they work with PEX, copper, PVC there's no sweating and the beautiful thing about them is you just push them on and you're able to actually rotate them slightly so uh, it makes doing the install and building a panel a lot easier um, I've got a pressure and temperature gauge coming right off of that um, and it has a service uh, port so you can actually remove the valve if you, or remove the gauge if you have problems um, these are the standoffs I'm using to mount uh, my system. Uh, next we have the Honeywell Auto Air Eliminator Serpent Vent. Um, that is a micro screen that removes micro bubbles from your system. Um, off of that I've got a thermal expansion tank here. Uh, this expansion tank is probably even a little large for the system I'm using. I'm heating 2,560 square feet with about uh, 2,650 foot of half inch PEX in my concrete floor. That's what the system is pumping the uh, uh, water and glycol mix through. Um, going over we've got a, uh, um, a pressure relief valve at the top there and then it comes down and this is a um, uh, isolator service valve uh, that allows you to um, actually uh, remove or put the fluid into the system and it's on a rotating pump flange <coughs> that then uh, is connected to the uh, ground fuss ground fuss uh, circulator pump this is my primary pump um, these pumps are the UPS 26 dash 99 FC uh, they're rated at 1 6 horsepower and they have 0 to 33 gallons per minute there's three different speeds that you can set this pump uh, I got a pretty good deal on them on eBay so I just used uh, that for both my primary and secondary pump um, should really size your pumps based on the amount of uh, pecs you have in your floor. Um, these particular pumps have a head range of 0 to 29 feet. After that we have another uh, isolator service valve. Um, this is actually where you would introduce the fluid into your system and the one at the top is where uh, uh, you would remove fluid or remove air from your system as you're doing your filling. Um, this goes down into the uh, Three quarter inch to one inch purge T. Uh, this is your basically your mixing valve that's going to mix the uh, uh, primary and secondary loops in your system. Um, these I, we're now switching over to one inch, um, and now I'm, um, this is an isolator ball valve here. Before the uh, secondary pump, I'm only doing one zone because it's it's all just to heat my shop, so I only have the one pump. Um, there's another. Uh, uh, ball valve which then goes down and then there's the manifold this is an RHT 9 loop manifold um, I bought the PEX and manifold system from Blue Ridge company uh, you buy it based on the size of your building um, so the bottom is where the uh, water enters the floor and then it gets returned at the uh, top that's the blue connector there uh, still one inch uh, watts fittings and PEX which then goes back up into the other side of that uh, purge T and then we go up and we have another uh, uh, temperature and pressure sense or pressure gauge and then I have a clear Y strainer this is pretty nice for any system that is considered low temperature uh, because you're able to see the actual fluid moving and then that enters again uh, through the cold inlet to the boiler so the way this works is there's a Taco 501 one zone uh, switching pump relay that when the when the floor the thermostat in the floor uh, calls for heat 
then that switches the coils on the relays and then that sends 120 volts to both of the pumps. And when those pumps start moving, they'll move water through the system and when that boiler, when that instant water heater sees the, the water moving in the floor or through the system, then it turns on. So I have it set pretty high just because it's a pretty warm day and I, I've been uh, playing with it to get it to run. So we'll turn it up, set to 73 degrees. And then once the thermostat registers that, it'll turn on, you'll see the little system. And if we go up here, now we see the 100 degrees on because now, I don't know if you can hear it, These are considered the noisy pumps and they're very, very quiet. So I can only imagine if you spend a lot more money on your circulatory pumps, uh, you would probably get even less than this. But these are, these are very quiet pumps. Um, and since they're moving, and you can see here at the clear strainer, you might be able to see motion, but I have all of the air out. Uh, we ran it quite a bit when we uh, filled it and purged everything. Um, the water is actually flowing through the, uh, through the system and so uh, we have, uh, I can't really read the temperature gauge from here. Um, looks like somewhere around 80 or so degrees, but that'll climb up um, as the water moves through from the boiler. Um, and coming out of the floor, we've got water about 80 degrees already. Um, looks like we're, with the pumps running, we're sitting at about 23 uh, PSI on, as far as pressure. So, all of these parts I purchased from Menards, except for the boiler came from Amazon, and the pumps came from eBay, and Blue Ridge Company sold me the, uh, the pole barn kit for the PEX and manifolds. Um, even the wiring and the uh, disconnects also came from Menards, so if you, have a, if you have a Menards local, it's a great place to pick up the parts. Um, this is a blatant copy of the HydroShark integrator panel. Uh, that I read about online. I just built it myself because buying the individual parts you'll save quite a bit. Uh, so if you're a little handy and can sweat some pipe and uh, uh, make some fittings, you can do that. And it'll allow you to, to get a lot nicer pumps than come with their small uh, low temperature setting. These, these pumps are a lot nicer than the ones on the 120 integrator panel. So anyways, this is my, my system here. Um, all connected up. Uh, thanks to my buddy Tony for helping me get it assembled uh, and helping me fill it up and, and uh, purging the system. Um, blatant shot of my uh, slat wall that's going to be the walls of my shop. These are one and a half inches thick walls. Um, use an R19 uh, insulation, bat insulation behind it. Uh, there's a shot of the 45 so you can see that it's like a slat wall, uh, basically a French cleat. Um, I used adjustable boxes uh, so that I could put all of my outlets through an inch and a half of plywood and still have them flush. I can say even on my 220 volt outlets that I still have those there. So lots of progress on the building. Still a lot of work to do. Lots of insulation. Tons and tons and tons of plywood for the walls and ceiling. More plywood. More plywood way over there, uh, some binder bins, and beauty shot of the lights in the center of the building. So, all right, everyone, have a great day. If you have any questions, post them up. Get a hold of me. I've got build logs on Sawmill Creek and Woodnet and Garage Journal if you're interested in seeing more about the shop or the radiant floor. Update it pretty, pretty regularly. Have a great day.